Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome. So thanks for joining us for our Aussie wine tasting this afternoon. A lovely way to finish off the week and finish off the day. Uh, so I'm Ali from Tourism Australia. So a lucky few of you would have received a home tasting kit um, of wines that we're going to be sampling today. So there's uh, three red wines and three white wines that we're going to be trying. Um, these are all wines from the Ultimate Winery Experiences of Australia collection. Um, if you unfortunately did miss out on receiving a home tasting kit, uh, all of the wines featured today that we're going to be trying are actually available to purchase in the UK. Um, and we will put them um, in the chat function, but also equally, if you look on the files section of this tab, um, of this session, sorry, you'll see the wines listed in there as well. And that's also where you can download um, the tasting notes from. So if you wanted to follow along today as well, you can have a look at, you can have the tasting notes up on the screen as well. Um, so uh, also, I, I just wanted to say before I introduce Sally, that also go and check out the Ultimate Wineries of Australia Partner Zone um, because they've got a load of trade resources in there. So their trade brochure and a really great promo video so that you can um, really get a glimpse of what to expect from the Ultimate Wineries of Australia experience as well. Um, and also, if you did want more information, which um, after you know after the session, you might want to learn loads more about these experiences. Um, we do have a module on the Aussie Specialist Program all about Ultimate a Winery Experiences of Australia as well. Okay, so I would love to introduce you all to Sally Cope. Now, many of you would know Sally already. She is the Regional General Manager for Tourism Australia for the UK and Northern Europe. But what many of you probably don't know is that prior to moving to the UK, Sal was actually the Executive Officer for Ultimate Winery Experiences of Australia. So she was there for four years. So she's well equipped with a wealth of knowledge, you know, to host this virtual tasting. So she's putting an old hat on for us here today. Um, so if you have any questions at all throughout the session, please type them into the chat. Um, chat and Q&A section. Also, um, what you're experiencing, what you're tasting throughout, please type that into the chat section as we go. Um, so without further ado, I might hand over to you, Sal, to take us through our virtual tasting today. Thanks, Ali. Thank you very much and welcome everybody. I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. As um, Ali mentioned, I used to actually run Ultimate Winery Experiences Australia. So this is a bit of a back to the future experience for me. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, because I was there right from the beginning when we set up this collective marketing group. Uh, it was a group of uh, premium wineries, some of the best in Australia, who got together and thought the concept of marketing collaboratively and working together to promote wine tourism across Australia would be a great way to share their collective voice and really get the message out globally um, of all the wonderful cellar door experiences that happen in Australia. And they were also um, very keen to uh, create much more personalised, immersive experiences because throughout Australia, it's very easy to drive around a wine region, drop in and out, in and out of different um, wineries and pop up to a cellar door and just have a free wine tasting. That's a great way to visit the wine regions. It's lots of fun and it's completely unstructured. You're operating to your, I guess, own devices. Another way to visit a wine region is to buy a tour and perhaps go in a, on a curated journey with somebody else who's taking you to different wineries and so on. This model is different again because what the wineries are doing is they've uh, created real, I guess, VIP experiences for visitors where when you arrive, because you've booked an ultimate winery experience, you're, um, you're a VIP on arrival, uh, you go behind the scenes, you meet a lot of the people behind the brands and the labels and the winemakers and the families and so on. And it's just for wine lovers, it's a great experience. Um, and it can be anything from something really highbrow, a masterclass that might be a vertical tasting where you say love 
a Cabernet Sauvignon and you're going back through all various vintages over the years of this one style of wine. Or it could just be a simple wine flight uh, trying a whole, ver a whole variety of different wines in order and perhaps matching them with um, uh, the right uh, food matching or so on. So uh, lots of variety. I think it's 26 wineries from 16 different wine regions across the country and together between them 110 different wine experiences that are all pre-bookable, can be built into an itinerary and obviously all um, fully commissionable. So when you look at a map of Australia, most of the wine regions are in the southern uh, states uh, of the country in the more temperate climates and they're all really, really conveniently located near the gateway cities, which makes it really easy to add a wine experience into an itinerary because they're all really accessible. So uh, just a caveat, I'm a wine lover who during my time at Ultimate Winery Experiences spent a lot of time listening to winemakers talking. Um, I'm not a qualified master of wine. I, I, I have my own personal opinion. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through the these six wine, uh, six different wines, and as we're tasting them, just share a few stories about the different experiences that you can have at these wineries. So the first one we're going to start with is from the Hunter Valley, and it's a winery called Broken Wood. And break, so feel free to open the first miniature bottle. And just I, my recommendation would not be to empty the bottle into the glass, but just put a taste in because what might happen is as we walk through this wine flight and you taste various different wines, you might decide that you want to go back and compare it to something else and um, flip flop through. Uh, so if you've got a few glasses in front of you, that will certainly help. But I encourage you to just put a little taste of the broken wood into your glass Give it a swirl around, look at the colour. It's um, very pale, uh, sort of, I guess, um, not even, it's just got a slight tinge of green, maybe a slight grassy colour, and have a little smell. And if you do have the uh, wine uh, tasting notes handy from Broken Wood, you'll see some of the uh, descriptive descriptions of the um the, the smells that you could be um, experiencing when you um, when you smell this wine. So citrusy, things like orange, orange blossom and so on. Now the thing about um, a semillon such as this one, it comes from the Hunter Valley and this is uh, the variety that the Hunter Valley is renowned for. They're, um, it's a very famous region in Australia for uh, semillons and they're all... Um, fermented in steel tanks. So there's absolutely no oak or anything in this wine. It can be aged for many, many years. So you'll see a lot of Hunter Valley semillons that end up um, quite rich and intense in colour and in flavour. So this one being 2018 is brand new, but uh, if you had a bottle and um, appropriate cellar conditions, you could have it for a long time. Right now, it'd be great with seafood. So have a little taste. A few people are saying they like this one, Sally, so very easy to drink. Excellent. Very fruity, delicious, and quite light. I agree. I love a Hunter Valley Semillon. Now, Broken Wood, as such, um, it's, it was established in 1970, so let me show you some photos. If you come to have a uh, wine tasting at Broken Wood, they have these this brand new cellar door that's only recently been uh, renovated in the last 12 months. Um, so these separate pods that you can do a tasting and they specialise in um, doing a wine flight such as this. So this idea of lining up and working through a series of different wines um, is, is, called, is called a wine flight. And what they'll do is they'll do a matching with each of um, each wine to sort of really find that combination of flavours in your mouth. They also partner with a couple of the other ultimate wineries in the Hunter Valley and have created this iconic day where you can go from Broken Wood to Audrey Wilkinson and to Tyrrell's Wines to do a fully curated version of uh, three of the, I guess, the big guns of the Hunter Valley. 
And the Hunter Valley, of course, is uh, just two hours drive north of um, Sydney. And it's uh, one of the oldest wine growing regions in Australia because Sydney was the original um, population, I guess, or base in Australia. So the Hunter Valley was one of the oldest regions. Brokenwood itself is 50 years old. It started in 1970. And it's a great story because the original block where they planted their wines um, was originally designed to um, have a cricket pitch on it and instead the wine, uh, the vineyard took over. So um, if you ever see the broken wood cricket, cricket pitch um, range of wines, that's why. But I'm glad you're all enjoying it. I'll have to have a sip. I'm, t I'm talking too much. I forgot to mention at the start, if you haven't figured it out, you can toggle between um, seeing Sally on the full screen or seeing the presentation. So if you just click on um, whichever square and you can actually pin it in the top left corner. Um, so just so you know. And also someone just asked about the tasting notes. They're just in the files section on the right. So if you click on the files section, you can download them there and have them open as well. But that is a classic Hunter Valley Semillon, really well balanced, really zesty and citrusy. So hopefully, hopefully you can get that sense of um, citrus in the smell and in the taste. Um, and as I say, great with great with seafood. So I don't want to rush people, but as I say, you don't need to feel compelled to. Um, to move, uh, to, to finish a glass before you move on to the next one because I, I think it's actually quite fun if you have got a couple of glasses to go back and forth and compare along the way. So the next one is also from the Hunter Valley and it's from a winery called Audrey Wilkinson. So, and Audrey Wilkinson um, is one of the very, very first vineyards in the Hunter Valley. I love it. Audrey is actually a boy <laughs> um, and he was about 15 years old and both of his parents had um, passed away quite young and he was left with this, you know, brand new burgeoning business of this vineyard. Um, they Their vines were first planted in 1866. So some of the vineyards around Audrey Wilkinson are really um, old and um uh, when you see those old vines with the huge chunky um, uh, stems, you will you you know what you're looking at. You're looking at very old uh, vines. And interestingly, the Hunter Valley's never really been hit by um, a disease in in the vineyards. So as a result, some of the oldest vines in the world can be found in the Hunter Valley, which is uh, quite surprising for visitors. So this one is a Chardonnay. It's hand-picked from their 40-year-old vines, so quite old established vines. And it, uh, you will taste the different flavour. It is actually, whereas the semillon is uh, fermented in steel tanks, this is fermented and matured in, uh, or pressed and then matured in fresh oak barrels. So you'll get a very, very different flavour. So if you have a smell, pour out just a little taste into this one. I'm a bit of a fan of a shardy. <laughs> Once again, quite a pale green in colour. It's 2017, so still relatively young. What could you smell? The tasting notes refer to green pears. I'm getting more of the, say, a nectarine. It should have, in comparison, a much creamier feel in your mouth. So that um, concept of having more texture in the wine, grapefruit, yep. Also apple, someone said. But can you feel it's got a much stronger texture? So I'm going to flick through to some photos. Sorry, I didn't give Brokenwood a run on their photos. But here's a photo. So this is the homestead at Audrey Wilkinson. So when you come and visit Audrey Wilkinson, uh, because it's one of the original uh, wineries in, in the Hunter Valley, they've got a great museum there. So one of their experiences, they just, they simply uh, call it picnic amongst the vines, but it's actually a much 
more in-depth experience than just that. What happens? You come along, you get taken into the museum and you have a self-guided walk around the museum, really getting a backstory of the history of the um, wine industry and the hunter and therefore in Australia because this is pretty much where it started. Um, you then uh, are taken through a private tasting where you run through a wine flight and taste a variety of their wines, starting from the whites and working through to the reds. And then off the back of that, you pick your favourite bottle, uh, the one that um, most appealed to you, and they pack up a lovely big picnic basket and they've got all of these different private spots around the vineyard where you can take your bottle of wine and your picnic and um, go and spend a couple of hours just relaxing. It's on um, cellar door is on quite a high location. It um, looking down over the valley with the Brokeback Mountains in the background. So it is a gorgeous location. It's one of the really top spots in the Hunter and perfect for a picnic. So that's the classic Audrey Wilkinson experience. Sorry, a little bit, bit of a, a, a look at the style of the picnic that you have. And this is a classic Audrey Wilkinson Shardy. So a few few comments have said um, not usually a Chardonnay fan, but this one is lovely. Um, someone said a bit too earthy, uh, definitely creamier, uh, peach and a bit oaky, uh, a lot stronger than the broken wood one. Um, very different from each other, but um, equally both as lovely. So that's good. Uh, yeah, much more body to that one. So peach and woody. That's it. And I think the body, yes, definitely, the creamy feel in the mouth and just the fact that uh, it's been matured in those French oak barrels. So it just gives it a much uh, greater depth of flavour. So I don't want to rush people. <laughs> I'm loving the... Um, Broken wood is still in the lead, apparently. Oh, so <laughs> everyone likes the first one. That's the beauty of wine. And I really found when I was working for at um, Ultimate Winery Experiences that as a wine lover, I really um, knew what I liked but had trouble um, articulating my palate, I think is the best way to describe it. And it just comes, it sounds silly, but it just comes from practice and not being afraid to try and describe the taste and how what and how you feel about it, whether you like it or don't like it, because it is subjective. It's like looking at art and knowing whether you like it or you don't. You can do the same thing with how you feel about wine. And what do you think this one would be paired with, Sally? Um, this one, I mean, I think Chardonnay, people would say seafood or white meat, um, I, I mean, I am happy with a chilled Chardonnay just on it, on its own in the sunshine, to be honest with you, um, uh, because it has enough depth of flavour to do that. But, um, yeah, people would typically say something like this would be seafood or, um, white meat. Okay. So shall we move along? I'm just tracking my timing. Okay. So... If everybody's okay, we're going to move to um, Tasmania now. So leaving the Hunter Valley and going to, uh, sorry, that's still Audrey Wilkinson, going to Joseph Cromie, which is in the Tamar Valley just outside of Launceston. I know I'm not supposed to have a favourite, uh, but this is one of my favourite wines in Australia. Um, Pinot Noirs are typically cool climate wines and the Pinot Noirs that are coming out of a, um, Tasmania at the moment are just fabulous. Joseph Cromie's got a great backstory. So while I'm chatting, just uh, pour yourself a, um, a little taste and I'll tell you a little bit about the wine first of all. It's, they have to treat Pinot Noir grapes really gently. They're notoriously temperamental to grow and to harvest. They're a much larger actual physical grape themselves. So these have to be hand-picked, really gently de-stemmed and then put into open top fermenters. And they're um, matured once again in oak before they go, go into bottles. 
So have a taste. You'll see the colour is quite pale. If you have a little swirl around and take a smell, instantly berries. That's for me. But maybe a, a slight hint of spice. I'm loving it. Love this, love this. <laughs> it's a popular one. Um, and when you taste perhaps a taste of cherry or raspberry, so you're getting the, um, the berries in the flavour of this one with a little touch of um, more savoury spice in the background. Now, Joseph Cromie is actually a relatively new winery. It started, um, gosh, it's probably only about 15 years ago now, and the founder is Joe himself. And Joe is um, now in his 80s. He um, immigrated to Australia in the 1950s and he worked in a variety of industries. I think his, his first business, he might have actually been a butcher. But then he became, he got into the wine industry and he's the man behind quite a few really well-known big labels, in wine labels in Tasmania. And in his, I guess, now later years, in his 80s, he um, he's set up Joseph uh, Cromie Wines, so his namesake wines. He's got a beautiful vineyard um, at um, just outside of Launceston at the start of the Tamar Valley and a very shiny, brand-new, small um, um, um I've got a total mind blank, um, winery to act for, where, for producing the actual wine. So when you go to visit, it's all very well contained and it's not a huge, big, um, monstrous winery like enormous factory. It's very well contained and you can walk through um, the winemaking process there very simply and easily. Apart from the Pinot Noirs, the other thing that the Tasmanians are uh, getting world-renowned for is sparkling wines. So Joseph Cromie is also well, really well known for their sparkling wines. And one of the experiences that they do there, which is just uh, really interesting, is the art of sparkling, and they'll take you through the whole process of how it's made. So you um, do a full um, tour of the winery itself, go from everything uh, through the fermentation to the bottling and so on. Um, and then the final stage in um, making a sparkling wine is that um, after the wine set, set or the sparkling has sat and fermented in a bottle for some time, they disgorge it to remove that. So they turn the bottles upside down like this, let all the sugars sink to the bottom, freeze the bottom then they disgorge it so you see like with the big um uh if you did it by hand the big knife that would shoot the top off it to get the sugar out the bottles then slightly less than full and they top it up with a liqueur, a liqueur to taste so a sort of sweet liqueur to taste and then they recork it and put the uh, net on the, the cage on it to hold the cork down and bottle of sparkling. So when you do that, you actually get your own bottle and to taste, decide how much liqueur you want to put in. So you make your own balance of how sweet you want your sparkling to be. And that's the photo you can see here as people are doing the different tastings, different amounts of liqueurs and everything to put in to make their own personalised bottle of sparkling wine. So it's a really, really special experience. Um, and they've got a fabulous restaurant there as well. So you then finish up with um, um, a, a three course meal and a variety of wines to taste with your meal as well. So a really classic example of what an ultimate winery experience can be. But is everyone enjoying the Pinot? Yeah, it sounds like they are. Quite a few people have said they're not usually um, a red fan or a Pinot Noir fan, but this one is delicious. So I think it's turned a few people, which is always good. Um, <laughs> someone's asked uh, how you feel about chilling Pinot Noir. 
I actually don't mind, especially if you're drinking it um, on a hot summer's day. I would rather chill it than put ice in it, put it that way, and water it down. So, yeah, I see no harm in chilling a Pinot Noir whatsoever. Okay. Um, a lot of people are picking up berries in that one, a bit of spices as well, um, light and smooth and rounded, a few yeah. are saying. Yeah. Um, what would you... What are your, oh, sorry, no, what do you recommend pairing this one with, Sally? Oh. <laughs> this one, I mean, for for the, I mean, oh, gosh, I'm a bad person to ask because I'm not an expert and I have to own up I'm a vegetarian as well. But I think officially people would say you could pair a Pinot Noir. Oh, what would they pair a Pinot Noir with? I think it would taste nice like with meat, like barbecue meat, but. Yeah. I also yeah. think every red does. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and spicy foods. Yeah. And someone we'll said, oh, spend. Ben said a, a good pasta. Oh, yeah, there you go, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Helping me out. <laughs> um, and Suzanne said maybe um, lamb or duck as well. I like Richard. Richard just said more Pinot Noir. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I should call out Ben in the audience who's probably more of a, a wine professional than I am, so I'll come and ask you for more of the wine pairing questions, Ben. <laughs> so um, we're halfway through and it's half past or almost half past, so close to perfect timing, but... Um, don't feel rushed. We'll just slowly meander over to our next, which is moving down to South Australia. So I'll go past Tassie. Well, there we are in the, um, that's in the winery at Joseph Cromie. And now I'll take you to Penfolds in Adelaide. And Penfolds as a brand is probably one of Australia's most iconic uh, brand wine brands. It's exported globally. It's the maker of um, what a lot of people would say is probably our most famous wine, which is Penfolds Grange. And uh, the winery itself is just outside of the Adelaide CBD. Um, in fact, I think it probably when it was first established felt like it was in the countryside, but now the city of Adelaide's grown up around it. So this is as close to an urban winery. It's pretty much in the suburbs of Adelaide. Penfolds themselves have vineyards there in the original um, um, location, but they also have vines throughout uh, South Australia, up in the Barossa Valley, in the Coonawarra region, uh, Fleuria Peninsula down in M McLaren Vale and so on. So when you're driving around the wine regions of South Australia, you do see a lot of uh, Penfolds vines. This home of Penfolds just outside of Adelaide though is an extraordinary cellar door. They have a restaurant there which is one of the um, uh, probably best winery restaurants in the country. Um, it has a, uh, this stunning cellar door that you can see with lots of private tasting rooms, so an example of a private tasting room, and, um, and then these bluestone cellars underneath which are heritage listed. Uh, where you can um, have events um, or a private experience down in the cellar. And they've also got the original Grange um, uh, cottage, which is where the Penfold family lives. So you can do a, a, a tour that takes you all behind the scenes and gives you the whole history of Penfolds. This um, is a Shiraz and it's called Max's Shiraz and Max Schubert was um, the original winemaker who first came up with Grange. Uh, so it's named after Max. This one itself is a uh, Shiraz Cabernet, 2019. No, sorry, 2017 we've got today. Um, and it's a real, I guess, contemporary example of a South Australian Shiraz, which is uh, a, a, a very... 
I guess, famous wine from South Australia. So if you have a little pour. A few people have already um, had a little taste and I'm getting some strawberry flavours. Um, yep, ripe strawberries. Yeah, uh, nice and smooth. I get chocolate when I smell this. Cherries possibly. Yep, yeah. cherries definitely. And when you taste um, some real... Uh, rich fruity tastes i like this comment from lizzie she said i do a cab sav and usually go for a californian but this one is moi she said so <laughs> <laughs> converted you to australian wine now lizzie <laughs> there's a great story when you go to penfolds about max schubert so if i just go back to this um original photo the bar that you can see along the left here which has got um a whole line of bottles sort of in a glass topped case that's um one bottle of grange from every vintage from the very beginning to now and the room just off it to the left has got this little secret door in it which has got a um a secret storage um spot and apparently as um, the tale goes, when Max first started making Grange, the owners of the company didn't think it was very good and um, he really believed in it and they told him to um, stop making it and he kept making it in secret and storing it in this secret hiding spot um, and it wasn't until years down the track that they recovered it again and, and could see his vision because time had passed and it had been sellered for such a long time and they realised that they were onto something. And now, of course, it's one of um, the world's most acclaimed wines and continues to be made. So um, it's, I guess it's, it's an Australian icon as far as a brand and whoever said this would go great with a steak, as a vegetarian, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> but to do an experience there, as I say, it would be uh, very much uh, arriving here at the cellar door, getting met by one of the um, uh, the uh, the staff here who will take you on a guided tour out through the vineyard into the cottage, get a backstory on the whole Penfold family, down through the cellars, which are just go for miles, um, all underneath um, the property, and then back up into one of the private tasting rooms to have a guided tasting and then followed by lunch in the restaurant. And they've got two um, styles of um, for dining. One is a more casual, they call it the McGill Kitchen, and then the other one is a five-star um, dining experience with a full degustation matching um, wines to each course um, on the menu. Lots of people liking this one. A few people have said it's uh, it, it's a bit stronger than the last one and probably better yeah. with food. Um, That's exactly right. Jean just asked the rough cost of this wine. So... Jean, if you most of these are available in the UK. Um, Penfolds, in particular, was is pre, I'm pretty sure that's one of the Waitrose one, but it's definitely a majestic as well, and it's about twenty pounds, which yeah, Aiden just said. So all of them are around that kind of yeah twenty pounds mark or less. So it's not it's definitely reasonable. And when we you say you say it feels a little bit um, potentially stronger or more bold of flavour, that is the way a wine flight is typically designed. So you start with the lighter whites and gradually build up in the boldness of flavour as you go. And I have no problem with going back and forth because it's the comparing and going back and forth where you can really, um, I guess get a feel for what you like and comparing and contrasting. Uh, I'm sure if anyone has spent, a, a, you know, a couple of hours going around different wineries and tasting different wines, there does get this real, it's almost like a palate fatigue where you can't taste it anymore. Uh, so the idea of being able to 
try a little bit of each one first and go back and forth and figure out the one that you really like is um, rather than overindulging too much on them, each one is a good plan. So moving along. The next one is from Margaret River, which is over in uh, Western Australia. Another favourite of mine, uh, Lewin Estate, and, and another one of Australia's really premium vineyards. So I'm just making room here. We probably should have warned you all actually to um, have multiple glasses out. I hope I haven't. <laughs> made it too tricky for people but this one um i don't have the actual bottle so i think we might be drinking the last supplies currently in the uk until new <laughs> new supplies come in because we did go looking for this bottle and it and it is currently sold out but it's the lewin estate lewin estate cabernet sauvignon from 2016 and it's their prelude label so they have a couple of different labels, their art series being their premium wines and the prelude being the next step down, but pretty much they're all amazing wines from Lewin Estate. Margaret River, as most of you would know, is in the southwest corner of WA um, and it's about three hours drive south of Perth. But it's such a glorious part of the world because the reason it's such an amazing wine growing area, it's a really rich land but it's surrounded by coastline, so there's fabulous beaches and this um, very temperate climate, so cool breezes that are keeping the, um, the vineyards um, very temperate with not too much sort of um, shifting or changing in climate. Um, this wine itself is, Margaret River is known very much for its uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, it's um, when you read the tasting notes of this, it, um, the people from Lewin Estate say that 2016 is one of the best vintages they've had in many years. So it's, I'm excited to taste this one. They said perfect conditions when it came to uh, climate and rainfall and everything that year. So if you're ready, just pour yourself a little taste. And once again, Let's see what we can smell. Um, lots of um, favourites here. So another another one of my favourites, yum. This one said, um, the, this is my red winner. So, yeah. Yeah. Someone's picking up tannins, very true. This is, I mean, even just the smell it has a much stronger nose for me. Oh, it's delicious. So someone said coffee and dark fruit. Yeah, taste dark fruit. Tastes spicy, maybe? Yeah. The, um, the tasting notes even said notes of lavender. Okay. And I find it interesting, especially when you uh, listen to someone talk about wine, often um, this is the point of learning how to articulate your palate. Often it is someone will give you a word and it's like, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Maybe black currant. Yeah. Right yeah. And then when you taste... Definitely the tannins, which is that drawing, the sucking the um, moisture a little bit out of your mouth. Quite a long finish, meaning that you can, you've got the taste and the feel in your mouth for quite a long time. You're right. I feel like John said um, it feels a little bit lighter than the Penfolds. We were debating which one should come first. They're very sort of um, as far as which is the bolder flavour. Yeah, that one seems thicker to me though. So I don't know, it makes sense to put that after. but So let me tell you a little bit about Lewin Estate. This is a family winery. 
Um, it's the Margaret River region is a bit younger. Um, it produces only about 4% of all of the wine in Australia. So it's quite a boutique wine growing region, um, but they get some of the best, most premium wines in the country out of this region. It's got an amazing reputation internationally. Um, Lewin, uh, the first vintage was 1979. So um, run by the family. They are um, lovers of art and their art series wines, their premium label or each um, uh, wine in the art series has a painting commissioned to be the label. So the photo you're looking at here is the gallery there. So when you go to Lewin Estate, they've got the art series gallery with all these fabulous original art, which can be found on all the bottle labels over history. Uh, so it's an experience here would be to arrive, uh, be met by the team, go down to the gallery, just spend some time there. They'll give you a glass of their sparkling and get. they'll give you a bit of a backstory about the wine labels and the different artists and so on. And you can have a wander around while you're having a, a, a glass of um, sparkling. Then they'll take you on a behind the scenes tour through the, um, the winery that's just behind. There's some vines around there, but they do have vines spread out as well um, in the Margaret River region. And then come back to their restaurant, which is actually upstairs here in the um, in the um, main building and, and, and do a tasting and wine match uh, for lunch. So it's... Uh, an amazing meal and it's incredibly indulgent and it goes for several hours because the first course is effectively a bit like this where you get um, three small tasters um, of wine with um, three different hors d'oeuvres or canopies to match and then that's followed subsequently by a three-course meal afterwards which is um, matched with a different wine for each. It's a really special experience and it, and um, guided the whole way through. So they're really teaching you about your palate and the flavours and everything as you go through. So upstairs is the restaurant and downstairs is the gallery. And just out the front is this um, natural amphitheatre where throughout summer they have a concert series and um, they've had some fabulous international acts come and play each summer at the Lewin Estate concerts. So it's a really well-known and famous winery in the region. Do we like that one? Yeah, there's a lot of like that. There's currently a discussion about um, pairing it with venison, Scottish venison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, but the, uh, that's a lot of people's favourite as well. So I think people are changing their mind as they go. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is why, why, which is why it's always good to go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comment from Amanda saying broken wood still has her heart, though. So that was oh, that's one. good. Yeah, I mean, Semillon, to be honest, is quite an acquired taste, and um, and it does uh, people. It does divide people because um, it, it is a very acquired um, taste as far as a white, um, a white wine grape variety. It's not popular. I'm a fan. There was a um, question about how close the accommodation is to Lewin, Lewin State. Um, well, Margaret River's dotted with lots of small guest houses and so on. Um, there is um, some larger hotels and resorts along the coast. Uh, there's a luxury lodge, actually, Cape Lodge, um, which is further north. So where Lewin Estate is is down in the southern end of the Margaret River region, and um, if you can, if you know of Cape Lodge, it's up on the northern end. So top to bottom is about a good 40, 45 minute drive. But Lewin Estate is um, in a little pocket with um, uh, Voyager Estate uh, just across the road and um, a couple of others just in the region. And it's, um, it's quite a well-known bowl of perfect wine growing or grape growing conditions. So it's um, it's the promised land as far as Margaret River is concerned. 
So we're coming up to the last one and the last one is very different again. So we'll take our time. I'll let you keep supping away, but um, just starting to prepare to talk about the de Bortoli Noble One. So we're going back to the other side of the country and um, this is a dessert wine. So this will be a very, very different uh, flavour on your palate. When you see this bottle, you can see it comes in a half size because it is a dessert wine, so it's a smaller bottle. Uh, the de Bortoli family are a big Italian wine-growing family in Australia and a lot of their vineyards are actually in New South Wales, so in the Hunter Valley, in um, the Riverina area in, um, in New South Wales. And this particular wine comes from their Yarra Valley vineyard, which is uh, Yarra Valley is only about 45 minutes drive from Melbourne, so it's very easy to do a, a day trip there. And Leanne de Bortoli and her husband, Mike Weber, who's the winemaker, um, set up this vineyard in, in the Yarra Valley and it's the family's, I guess, premium vineyard where they produce their premium wines. So they planted first in 1971. So once again, it's um, relatively new. And they do specialise in a lot of Italian uh, and European varietals of wine. So um, as I say, this is a dessert wine. It is... Um, also a semillon, so we've topped and tailed the semillon, but this is a different style of um, uh, a winemaking. It's um, the word botrytis, so it's a botrytis semillon, and um, without make, making it sound horrible, uh, basically botrytis is a bit like a, a, fu a fungus or a, a, a disease that hits the grapes. And it brings on um, a really, but like a high intensity of sugar content, um, and effectively the infection in the grapes really increases the intensity of the or the concentration of the sugar levels. And so when you, I've got to find myself a glass now. There we. There are lots of comments saying how sweet that one is. Yeah, um, and, and that's right. It's a dessert wine. And that it would go lovely with a cheese board. I agree with That's that. It. <laughs> it's absolutely designed for a cheese board. A few, a couple of people have actually mentioned peaches, and then another one, um, apricots. Yeah, definitely peaches. I could get that. And sugar, just I feel like it's like almost like burnt sugar. It's um, it's rich, it's powerful. You can feel it. It's much um, denser in the mouth. It's designed um, very much as a dessert wine and perfect for a cheese board. I'm just going to have a little taste. And dangerously Moorish. Is that a technical term, Moorish? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but um, one of the great experiences that um, are really popular with Ultimate uh, Winery Experiences and De Bortoli is um, they've got a, a wonderful Italian restaurant there at the um, at the main cellar door. So when you come out to um, De Bortoli, they'll meet you at the cellar door take you on an ultimate winery experiences, take you into their private tasting room where they'll walk you through a wine flight. As I say, a lot of Italian um, or European styles of wine and they'll do a little matching with each one and, and really point out some interesting flavour combinations. Then you go upstairs to the Italian restaurant where they um, you have lunch included um, so very traditional Italian fare. And they also, as part of this full day experience, have partnered with a couple of other operators in um, the Yarra Valley. So one is Hillsville Sanctuary, which is uh, an Australian wildlife sanctuary, which is very natural in its design. I don't know if anybody has been there, but it's a great place to 
really get up close to some Australian, iconic Australian wildlife in their native habitat. Um, it's also one of the rare places in Australia that you could maybe catch a glimpse of a platypus, which is very exciting. Um, so that's included in the package. And then the other thing they include, which is very important after a long, lazy lunch, is a visit to the, um, the chocolate factory in the Yarra Valley at the end where you can have um, um, taste some chocolates and um, ice cream and everything that's made there on the spot. So someone suggested combining with Puffing Billy. It, exactly. That's it. So it's a really easy day to sell which combines the behind the scenes winery experience, but also with um, some of the local attractions in the Yarra Valley. And that's the beauty, I think, of what Ultimate Winery Experiences are doing. They may have um, really uh, highbrow experiences for wine enthusiasts um, who are specifically, you know, you? I, I remember we used to get inquiries from people going to Margaret River and they wanted to taste Cabernet Sauvignon from a certain year because they'd heard how good that year was and so they were very definite. Whereas an experience like this at De Bortoli is, you know, for an experience seeker who loves food and wine and just wants, a, you know, a great day out. So they're du I guess what I'm saying is a winery experience doesn't need to be intimidating or it can be it, it can be designed to suit whatever your clients are looking for. So that's the – it'd be great if we could do a, um, a poll. We can't do a poll here, can we, Ali, to see – can we? Um, I'm not sure. Too late. We should have thought of it earlier. Yeah. Should this one be served really cold then, Sally, someone's asked? I personally think so. I think that there's probably disagreement on that because the colder something gets, the more you lose a little bit of the flavour. So once again, it's personal taste. I like I like them served really chilled. But yes. Um, we might be able to do a poll. It would just be what's your favourite wine, wouldn't it? Is that what you're thinking, Sally? Yeah, what your favourite wine is, but it might be we'd have to quickly type them in. We might not have enough time. Time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. Pen oh, here we go. They're all coming through. Penfold Brokenwood's Broken Woods doing really well. Yeah, I think, I mean, do you know what? We've been thoroughly spoiled today because these are all great examples in the grape variety or varietal um, that they're representing of some of the best that Australia's got to offer. And they're also from the regions where some of the best comes from. So Semillon's come from the Hunter Valley and that is the Broker Wood wine. I personally, uh, people may argue different regions, but I love a Pinot Noir from Tasmania and that was the Joseph Cromie. The Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from the Margaret River, some of the best of the best. So I think we've been very spoiled. I actually think it's pretty even. Like when you see everyone's commenting what which one's their favourite and I do think it's a good mix of all of them, to be honest. I don't think any have been left off. So... It's nice widespread. I think everyone's taste is varied um, throughout yeah. them all. And hopefully if you've got some left over, you might be able to um, taste with um, um, dinner tonight and see, you know, what complements different things and so on. So I'm loving reading all of these notes. Do you have Let's any go. idea where Joseph Cromie came from um, originally, where he immigrated from? Uh, he's Czech, Joe, oh. Joe Kromi, yeah, from Czechoslovakia. So he left Europe um, in the 50s. I think, it, um, you know, it was sort of all rebuilding and um, early 50s, late 40s it might have even been. And um, he travelled overland to Australia. It's quite an epic tale. If you go onto their um, website, it tells the story about Joe. And he's such a lovely man and um, he's still there very active in the business. His, um, his um, I think it's his grandson now actually, is running the business, but he's active and you'll often bump into him either, you know, walking around the winery or at the vineyard or at the cellar door. Um, yeah, and I think that's another thing why people love 
these experiences because when you are arriving as a VIP and you're doing something a bit more behind the scenes, um, when we sell them and promote them, we don't say you will meet such and such, but that's half the thrill for someone who's a lover of wine to have those unexpected encounters or meeting people um, um, as part of the experience. That's what makes it really special. It looks like we have a poll in there of which one's your favourite wine. So um, it looks like TGG have kindly put that in there. Oh, so you guys can have a little vote and we'll get we'll make it official. Excellent. <laughs> um, a couple of people have said they need the full bottle to get to um, get to the bottom of it, which is fair, <laughs> fair enough. enough too. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah, you guys can go out and um, purchase all these as well. If you um, maybe your favourite one. We'll see what that is when everyone's fit, done the poll. <laughs> and make sure you remember when you are, you know, designing itineraries for clients that it's so easy to put a wine experience into an itinerary. They're all pretty much the regions, as I said. I'll go back to the map, actually, so I'm going to bounce back through the photos. Uh, all the regions are really um, close to gateway cities, so... There was actually a question a bit earlier from Lizzie that says um, we'd love an idea of great wine tasting tours of Oz. So yep. I guess you're probably about to say you can combine a lot of these. You can. And a lot of these wineries work together. So I'd really encourage people to look directly at Ultimate Winery Experiences website because they have, they categorise their experiences for, you know, masterclasses, uh, dining, um, you know, more sort of um, it, uh, just sort of food and wine experiences and so on. But then they also have multi-day um, itineraries where they'll combine with accommodation and different things in their regions and so on. So they've got really good um, recommendations for how to make the most of the wine regions. Um, so have we done our poll? I want to know. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Why <laughs> the website up? Uh, Thirty-four people have answered, and it looks like Broken Wood has thirty-two percent, and followed by uh, Noble One, which is twenty-three. It, I'd say it's still close, though. It's it's pretty even. Yeah. Spread. Yeah. What's not to love? They're all good. And as I say, it's personal, isn't it? It's very subjective. Yeah. And I think someone did say um, it does depend what you're pairing it with, if it's on its own or if you're eating something at the same time. Sometimes that changes the taste as well, I think. Yeah. But thanks so much for everyone for joining us. And I'm sure it, sorry if it felt rushed. I was timing it this morning trying to figure out how much time we could allocate for each wine, but I think we did okay and it didn't feel too rushed. I think it was great. Lots of thank yous coming in. A uh, great way to close off the Thursday evening. Um, Yay. I hope you're all finished for the day. You don't have to go back to. You know, <laughs> um, I think just with that, I'll. I guess I'll just wrap up with saying that we've got another. Um, great day plan tomorrow as well, guys. So if you sign in from nine thirty tomorrow morning, we've got a full session of agent training tomorrow with um, the different states and territories of Australia. So make sure um, you come in and listen to those as well as Qantas as well as giving a presentation as well. So um, jump in for that to get some in-depth um, information about the different regions, some updates from all of them about what's been happening um, and from Qantas as well. So that's from 9.30 tomorrow. But thank you so much, Sally, for that. That was great. You're welcome.